And welcome back to the channel. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a fantastic day. We're on location at the National Corvette Museum. And uh, even though we have uh, this virus nationwide shutdown, uh, Corvette Museum is still doing the museum deliveries. Now they're closed to the general public, but uh, I came down here today because I get to meet one of my customers uh, that is taking museum delivery here at the National Corvette Museum. So fantastic thing. And we're going to find out a little bit more about what's going on. But a couple weeks ago, the National Corvette Museum delivery process was actually on constraint, which is really, I think, a good thing. I'll ask them if it's good or bad or what's going on. But uh, I would assume that it is because so many people want to do it. So if you're looking to get a Corvette 20 or 2021, make sure you check out National Corvette Museum delivery. It's absolutely awesome. And one thing I see back here, we're gonna talk about that here in a second. I don't like that. I don't like that in any way, shape or form. Hey, if this is the first time that you're seeing my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notifications on. And a great way to support the channel is check out ChevyDudeStore.com. This is my personal 2020 Corvette right there. And there's some awesome posters and t-shirts in there. Check it out, ChevyDudeStore.com. Thanks for your support. We're gonna continue doing awesome, sweet videos on everything Corvette and everything Chevrolet. When I pulled up to the National Corvette Museum, I see a red Corvette that just got done being museum delivered and uh, it's on an open transport. I asked the driver, where's this going to? It's going to California. So guys, for a couple extra hundred bucks, you can ship these enclosed. And uh, as a Corvette owner myself, as a Corvette salesman, don't be cheap on your car. Ship that thing interior because look what's on this truck. Nothing saying nothing negative about the driver, but there's a total Subaru sitting right there. Airbag deployed is must messed up. This is an old car. You can see there's rust already forming on the panels, but literally for like 300 bucks more, you could ship in something like that and be completely protected 100%. So uh, if you need help shipping your Corvette, reach out to me, chevydude.com. I'll be more than happy to help you. I'll be more than happy to orchestrate it uh, to make sure you get it out there. But that thing's got 3,000 miles to go on an open transport. We don't know if that car is gonna be moved to the bottom. We don't know what type of damage is gonna be. It's springtime. So going through like Oklahoma and all those Midwestern states, we uh we can see hail we can see tornadoes who knows what's going to happen who knows what's going to get blown up there in the rain and all sorts of stuff like that so literally look me up if you need help shipping your car from the national corvette museum or shipping from a dealership because i have national transport guys all over the country and they're quick just like that i always love looking at the benches outside the museum a lot of these are in memory of so that's really awesome bob keaton jr I love that silhouette of that car. And then uh, down here, we have another one, uh, Michael Holt. Looks like that's in memory of from 2007, passed away. We got the River Cities Corvette Club. That's the Corvette Club. That's at my dealership, great Corvette Club. But it's a lot of different uh, things here and a great way to support the museum. And remember your loved one is uh, getting one of these benches or getting one of, oh, John Lingenfelder, great friend of mine. I'm really good friends with Ken Lingenfelder and Kristen, but uh, another Lingenfelder one, you can get these blocks and all that good stuff here at the museum as well. See all these blocks, they have people's names on them. Pretty awesome. That black truck I just showed you, this one's getting ready to be put on that. Where's this one going to? Melbourne, Florida, there you go. So going to Florida, so you guys see on going to Florida or going to California, definitely ship and close and this is the one that i'm here for today mr steven avello and his wife kim are picking up this awesome white car i don't even remember what it is 2lt 3lt have to open it up this is what happens when you sell so many cars i just simply can't remember uh how many uh or what trim levels that they purchased so we got the high wing spoiler you gotta love that oh look at that r8c museum delivery i might have to see if i can uh con these guys in one of those license plate brackets so got the corvette or the uh got the engine appearance package in there we'll show you their car here in a little bit take a sneak peek back here we have orange with natural dipped interior we got another one orange over there that might look like a uh, cream sickle back there it looks like it may have cool gray interior that white one's got red interior back there and that ceramic matrix back there it's got high wing on it we'll have to look at what that one is and that one is shadow gray metallic back there that they are washing up for the new owner so i think this is the first ceramic matrix gray and look at that 
with the blue interior that I've seen. GT2 seats, transparent top, Spectre Gray, Trident, or excuse me, yeah, Spectre Gray, Trident machine faced wheels. Uh, these guys are from Denver, Colorado, and they're driving it all the way home. Love it. They said the exact same thing that I said. These cars are meant to drive, not meant to park. And I love it. I love seeing them. They're young too. Uh, 30s, they're in their 30s. So this, uh, this Corvette is definitely bringing the age barrier down from what we're used to seeing, which is awesome. I haven't delivered anybody over the age of 50 so far, maybe one, maybe one above that, but all my people have been like in their 40s and 30s and 20s. It's crazy. So the uh, last thing you do at the museum is you get to ride along in your car out. And you can see there's some people down there uh, but they get to, uh, they clap at you and we'll show you here, but check this out. This is the buyer of the car. This is Steven. Steven, you ready to take your car home, buddy? Yeah. All right. How old are you? Six. You're six. You're my youngest Corvette buyer ever. So here they come. Steven gets to ride in his brand new car out. And all those guys down here are clapping for him. First start for Steven in his new car. Nice. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so unfortunately, you can see the museum is closed. The cafe is open for just carry out. And you can visit virtually at corvettemuseum.org. But um, yeah, it's, it's a shame that the museum's closed. So I'm not gonna be able to show you guys everything like I wanted to. Uh, but the good news is if you subscribe, turn all bell notifications on, we will do another video down the road and uh we'll show you a little bit more of the museum delivery definitely worth it you guys want to win a corvette check this out so do you guys want to win a brand new 2020 c8 you know um rick hendrix paid three million dollars for his car you can pay 20 for yours yeah yeah twenty dollars not 20 million twenty dollars so go check out corvette museum's website for 20 bucks on April 25th at 3 p.m., you can win this 3LT Black Coupe. Absolutely sick. Go to the Corvette Museum's website right now. I'll put the link in the description. And if you win, tag me. All right, guys, we're all done at the museum. We have made the 90 mile trip back to Louisville, Kentucky. We have just shy of 900 miles on the car and it is now time for the first oil change of the car. All right, so 820 miles is exactly what we have on the car. And I'm gonna to attempt to find uh, a little funnel to see if there's any contaminants in the engine. It'll be interesting. Again, the oil change is not mandatory at 500 miles like it was on the C7. It's recommended by me, by many other professionals, but it is not something that is standard from Chevrolet as far as the routine maintenance goes. So every service rack is different. It's kind of interesting because, you know, I have the front lift on here and I did the PDI video on that rack over there and I just hit my front lift and I think I put that on camera and it went up there with no problem. Here, we can't do it. We have to uh, use these uh, makeshift uh, ramps that we have here at the dealership to get the rack under there correctly. And of course, you know, we have to have those little blocks on there so that way the rack doesn't change or touch the car. And uh, I've got my funnel and we're gonna do this oil change and we're gonna put this funnel in there and see if there's any metal contaminants in the oil. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, there we go. We got most of it started. Engine hasn't uh, rested a whole lot. We shut it off and then racked it right up. Kind of interesting. It's fairly dirty, but not too crazy dirty. All right, so there it is. There's nothing in here. There might be one little itty bitty piece right there where my finger just touched, which you're not going to pick up on camera, but there is no contaminants in this thing whatsoever. Pretty impressive. So we're not going to go into detail on the oil change, but uh, your filter is right here. Your drain plug is right here. And every time that you change your oil, you want to inspect this ring up here and this ring down here. 
if you can see that on camera. But that's all you have to do. And uh, seven and a half quarts of oil. So you wanna see the whole oil change, I'll link that in the top right hand corner when I did TJ Hunt's car, but really, really simple oil change on the 2020 C8. So I'm doing an inspection on the car underneath here to make sure everything's good after the first oil change and whatnot. And I found burnt rubber on this side. What the heck happened here? Did somebody at the factory do that? All right, so while they're changing the oil, I'm gonna, I came up here because I've got a couple C8 orders to go in this week, which is good, even though they're shut down uh, at the plant. So we got those done, I communicate with those customers, make sure their order's done and all that good stuff. And then also we have more C8 ground effects. Now these are coming from ACS Composites. These are not my ground effects. These are the ground effects I was gonna put on we're doing something different. I'm still waiting on those to be shipped in. So uh, we'll share with you uh, what's going on uh, soon on those ground effects. But uh, since the exposed carbon fiber ground effects were really tough to get, ACS Composites apparently got a couple of them and uh, my customers were able to buy them and they just shipped them here and we're gonna put them on. I want you guys to check this out. I wanna know your opinion. Should I do this or not? These are really, really expensive. They're $1,000. But, oh, wait, 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 before I show you. We do have a little carbon fiber on the car. We have the exposed carbon fiber roof up here. And then I did the engine appearance package, which is tough to see, but if you look in there, there's carbon fiber in there as well. Really wish this was carbon fiber. This high wing spoiler, I love. I really wish this was carbon fiber. So I've been thinking about putting carbon fiber on the car. I have these black mirrors. I painted those as a hundred dollar option because that was, that was gonna be black back there. So the question comes into play. We'll go back in and look at that box. Should I put these exposed carbon fiber mirror caps on? See those right there? Those are real carbon fiber, crazy, crazy light. But is it worth it? A thousand bucks for two of these. So the oil change is all done. I'm excited to get back in it and uh, go rip it up here a little bit. But uh, yeah, you know what, I'll tell you what, if you guys hit that thumbs up button 3000 times on this video, I'll spend a thousand bucks on those mirror caps and I'll put it on it. I don't plan on spending that money, so you gotta make me do it. 3000 thumbs up, I'll buy them. Good thing I got that PDR rolling. That dude was just driving by yelling Chevy to you with his camera <laughs> off the phone. Hey, thanks for watching, man. You guys, you work for Ruck Regal Electric, so thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, and we'll see if we get to 3,000, and I buy those uh, carbon fiber mirror caps. 1,000 bucks, Woo. All right, we got a tunnel, let's hit it. Oh, my goodness. This thing pops so nice. I can't wait to get an exhaust on this thing. We go through that same tunnel in Mexico and wow, it's just gonna pop so loud, crackle. And I, my goal is, I'm not saying I'm gonna do this. I'll take that back. May or may not do this. Shoot fire. Well guys, I wanna say thanks for joining me on the channel festivities today. We're gonna live stream. So can you guess, what are you doing on my chair cat? Can you guess down in the comment section what day I recorded this video on? So as always guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notifications on because we wanna have you see everything we do and we'll live stream on every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. But today's live stream is a little different at a different day and a different time. So I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day and drive safely.